Let's have a good time. Welcome in my party people. Coach Anderson here. Today's class is another arithmetic reasoning session. And so there are always the same three goals. Number one, effective word problem strategy. So before we get started, who here feels like a simple yes or no? Who here feels like they have a pretty good sense of how to tackle word problems in general? Generally speaking, you know, we're about to do a ton of word problems in today's class. Do you feel like you're prepared? You know, are you excited to do these problems or are you feeling a little nervous about these problems? That'll pretty much help you answer that question. No, 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 no 50-50. 50-50 means no. Let's be honest here. 50-50 means no. <laughs> Nick. <laughs> All right, cool. So by the end of today's class, one of my goals for you, and I really want you to, if you want to take a screenshot of all three of these, please do. But by the end of today's class, I, I really want you to self-reflect and say, hey, you know, do I feel like I have a better grip on what word problem strategy means? Can I trust myself to look at a word problem and not freak out, hope that I just start matching numbers and something will work or start looking at answer choices and being like, I haven't chose B in a while, so I might as well pick, you know, let's not get into that, right? So I want to know at the end of class, are we closer to standing tall and confident than we are, you know, making those rookie mistakes, as I call it? Number two, how to practice each type of problem that you'll see in today's class. So we're going to see a variety of questions. And again, for those of you in the program, if you want to write this down, this class is purely looking at arithmetic reasoning. That's really thick. That's going to be units one through five. Units one through five for arithmetic reasoning if you're in the program. Again, that's general word problems, proportion word problems, unit conversion word problems, percent word problems, and fan favorite, distance, rate, time word problems. And by fan favorite, I mean, what was the word that you guys used? Someone texted me. Um, oh, yeah, hell. Uh, that's what they call that. So we're going to go ahead and get into all of that today. And now number three, um, again, how to continue practicing and, and how to basically understand those main ideas and keep growing within those uh, fields. So obviously um, I'm making a lot of jokes, but we are going to be taking this seriously starting like right now. So here's how it's going to go. I'm going to throw you right into the wolves. You know, we're going to go ahead, practice these problems. It's going to be under a time limit. And I just want to see where your confidence goes from beginning of class to the end. I know it's going to feel chaotic in the beginning, especially if this is your first class. I get it. I get it. A big problem is facing the test anxiety. Who here, yes or no, feels like they suffer from some sort of test anxiety, whether minor or major? Who here feels like they suffer from? Cool. Yet again, you're not alone. Plenty of people suffer from test anxiety. From the simple no, feeling your heart rate elevate the moment you start thinking about the test to clearly freaking out and looking like the words are just doing backflips on the screen. You know, there are definitely a bunch of ranges to test anxiety, but they're all manageable. And so I'm going to show you first what your test anxiety looks like with these questions coming up. And then I'm going to show you how to go from where you are to where you want to be, which is a calmer state, a more confident state. And even if you get a question wrong, the confidence that you know how to improve from there. Does that sound like a good idea to you guys? Second attempt? Hey, we got this. Yep, after the third try, you do have to wait six months. That's why it's very important to do things the right way. So here's what we're gonna do. In today's class, for the first five problems, we are going to do two minutes per question. Okay, for the first five questions, we're gonna do two minutes per question. And after every question, we're going to go ahead and review it. I'll tell you where it's from. And again, feel free to ask questions as we're going through that solution. No questions off limits. As long as it's relevant to the question, we're good. Cool. So let me go ahead and get this timer up for y'all. Right over here. All right, cool. Timer's up. And I'm going to make my face disappear. The timer's going to be up right there. All right, guys, let's have some fun here. Three. Two, one, let's go. Again, how quickly can you snap your attention to what's important? Let's go. 
Type ready when you're ready. Do not reveal the answer. I'll leave you now. Still have about 30 seconds. So if you're sitting here right now feeling a little confused, a little anxious, remember you always have a shot at taking a guess. We still have 20 seconds. Looking at our final seven, feel free to reveal your answers. Put a question mark next to your answer. If it is a guess, if it's a pure guess, take a question mark, put it in there. But Time is up. Go ahead, reveal those answers. What do we have? What do we have? Time is up. Time is up. Time is up. Let's see what we have. Okay. See a lot of us saying uh, C's and D's. Looks like majority are D. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. I'll give a, a few more seconds here. Let me go ahead and check my party people over here. Okay. Some D's in there, an A with a question mark, Denia. Okay, we'll see what's up there. Roberto, I see you, DJ as well. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and check this out. Um, how did you guys feel about this one? Do you guys feel like this one was on the easier, medium, or harder side of things? How would you rate this one? Yeah, the majority of us are saying, you know, pretty manageable. As I even saw someone say, all you have to do is subtract, right? So here's one thing I'm going to teach you in this question. Um, the, the one thing I want to teach you or remind you of, if you already know this, is that regardless of how easy something might seem, it's always best to be able to absolutely dominate it if you know how to take shortcuts. So all of us agree here, or most of us, excuse me, most of us agree that, yeah, this seems like a pretty straightforward question. But even for those of you that think it's straightforward, I'm going to show you how we can make it even faster. Let's start here. Everybody, number one rule to word problem success, first step is to do what? Yep, all my lazy people are saying RTQ. I'm new, coach. What does that mean? It means read the question. And because my students here uh, don't want to elaborate on what RTQ means, I appreciate that. <laughs> so that means read the question first. The reason that I have you read the question first is because whenever you're trying to solve any problem, the first step is identifying the problem. If you don't know what the issue is, if you don't know what the resolution needs to get to or what it feels like, then you have no idea where to start. You're kind of just guessing at that point. So if you know what the question is, if you know what the problem wants you to find, then the next step is just looking at the information that's related to that, that's related to what you want to find. Yes or no, does that make sense? Reading the question sentence first. This right here, right there. Reading the question sentence first always gives you the upper hand because the more you know that you need to do, the less anxious you feel about it. So right here, it says, if Sandra and David have this much money and this much money respectively, so meaning each of them have this much money, then how much does Patricia have? So two things, guys, two things. One, did you notice me skip over reading the numbers? Everybody, do I have to read the numbers digit by digit? No, you don't have to read the numbers to know what to do with them. 
You read around the numbers. It's the context clues that tell you what to do. You don't really need to get hung up on, oh, no, there's a decimal there. I'm scared. No, nah, drop that, man. You don't know if you need to be scared yet. You don't even know if that number matters. So number two, here's the big thing about word problems. You need to know, again, how to spot the question. Anything after who, what, when, where, how many, which of the following, that's really where you want to focus your attention to. The word if right there, that's basically saying, hey, if conditional information, here's some information. But that's not the question. The question always starts after who, what, when, where, how many, which of the following. That's really where you want to look. So we see here that it says, how much does Patricia have? I got no idea what's going on in the problem, but everybody, is it clear that we want to focus on Patricia and how much money she has? Right on. That's the first thing we want to focus on. It's clear. It says, how much does Patricia have? So if it's all the same to you, I'll go ahead and write Patricia equals blank dollars. Just to keep things simple. You can keep that in your head or you can write it down on paper. As you get better at word problems, keep it in your head. Number two, we're going to start looking at the information. And if you want to know the cadence or the sequence I'm going through, here's number one. What do you want? Number two is what do you have? And again, that's the information. Let's write down this information. Together, Sandra, David, and Patricia have a total of this much money. And then it says, Sandra and David have this much and this much. So let me write that down here. The total between them, the total between all three of them is $583.74. And then we see that Sandra, I'll just say Sandy, and David, I'll just say Dave, because I can, we have 221 28 and then we have 223.28. Everybody, did I write all the relevant information so far? Okay, cool. Let's see, you know, what is it that we have to do with the information? Can we get to that quickly? Well, it's, again, it's not in the numbers. It's in the context. This is why it's so important to understand key words, right? That's way too important. Look at what we see. Together, all three of them together have this much. We see that Sandy has this much, Dave has this much. Everybody, is it fair to say that if we're trying to find out how much Patricia makes up, we're trying to subtract? We have the total. If we take away Sandy, take away Dave, we find out how much is left, and that should be Patricia according to the information. Great. Sounds good. Now, there's two ways to handle this, two ways, two common ways. One would be, hey, let's go ahead and add Sandy and David up and then subtract it from that $583. Or you can subtract one at a time. You can subtract Sandy, then you can subtract David. Which way did you go? Did you add and then subtract from the whole thing? Or did you subtract one at a time? Which way did you prefer to do it? So pay attention. Pay attention to the comments here. So we see a ton of people saying, I added, then subtracted, I added, then subtracted, I added, then subtracted. I see a ton of people saying that. And so from that, is it safe to say that you prefer addition over subtraction? Is it fair to say that you prefer addition over subtraction? Yeah, because if you were to subtract twice, again, that's subtraction twice. But if you add them together and then subtract, you're only subtracting once. And so I can see that a lot of people here, a lot of you intuitively prefer to do it the easier way. And I like that because ASVAB isn't about, you know, suffering through the hard way. It's finding efficient ways to get things done. Again, I'm going to come back to that. Finding efficient ways to get things done. Let's add these together here. Let's add these up. Paste them right here. Let's zoom in. Everybody help my, my ugly butt out. We have eight plus eight. That's going to be what? Hit me. That'll be 16. We'll carry that one. Two plus two plus one. That'll be five. I'll save you from that. Keep that decimal place in the same place. 
Then we have one plus three, that's four, two plus two, that's four, two plus two, that's four. So that's pretty quick. $444.56. Everyone, are we good so far? All we did was add David and Sandy's money. And now what's the next step again? Remind me, let's see if we understand. Can we talk about what we're supposed to do? What was it that we're supposed to do again? Be specific, subtract what? Subtract my, my taxes from my gross income. What are you talking about? Come on. Yeah, from the total, thank you. Let's be specific there. Let's work on being specific. The more we can talk about it naturally, trust me, the more it's gonna make sense, the more connections you're building. So with that, we're gonna subtract it from the total. That total that we said we had right over here, that 583.74, we're gonna subtract it from there. So allow me to take this. I'm gonna duplicate this and I'm gonna duplicate this because you know how efficient I like to be. This is another word for lazy, but there we are. Let's subtract and here we go. Okay, so now that we're here ready to subtract, let me erase this. We have a four minus six, and that can cause some issues for some folks who, again, you know, just don't really practice that often, right? So what we need to do here, we need to borrow. Gonna turn that into a six, that's 14. Help me out, everybody. 14 minus six, what's that gonna be? Sounds good, it's gonna be eight. Okay, then we have six minus five, that'll be one. Decimal place goes in the same spot. Again, line them up. Then we have three minus four, that's not exactly gonna work. So let's go ahead and talk to HR. Let's borrow some money here. 13 minus four, everybody hit me. Yep, that'll be nine. Then we have seven minus four, what's that gonna be? Appreciate that. And then five minus four, that'll be one. Perfect. So we have 139.18. Let's see if that answer is there. Is that there? Yep, it is. It is answer choice D and we are done. And we are done. Boom. So my party people, again, the only question with, the only answer with eight, Exactly, Thierry. You've been listening very, very carefully to how I teach. So the two most recent comments here live on Zoom have said something very telling about the strategy that I'm going to approach this problem for the second try. But before I do that, everybody, does this first method make sense to you? Yes or no? Do you feel like this made sense? Okay, and it's okay to say no. Again, I'm not, you know, I'm not holding anybody hostage. I want to have an honest conversation about where we are. But great, I'm glad that you guys feel good about this. Now, remember, on the ASVAB, the great thing is, if something is easy, let's make sure it's easy. Let's make it even easier. Let's learn some test-taking strategy. That's why you're here, right? Let me show you how you could have taken maybe 15, 20, 30 seconds less on this question. Here's what I noticed. Immediately, when I'm reading this question, Hey, Devin, copy and paste that in a moment. I'm not going to be able to get to that right now, but copy and paste that. So everybody, was it clear to you from reading the problem that we had to subtract? Was that clear to you? From the very beginning, was that clear to you? Okay, great. And even if not, let's suppose that we're at the point where this feels easy. We noticed that we had to subtract. And so here's what I'm saying. What I noticed about these answers is that when you're looking at the decimal places, the cents, they're all different. Five, one, six, eight, they all end in different numbers. So do I really have to calculate it all? No, look at what I noticed. I noticed, and I'm gonna make this a little smaller for myself. I noticed that I have a total of 74 cents and then the pieces, Sandy and Dave, were each 28 cents there. So my question is this, everybody, am I gonna have to do any uh, um, borrowing from the dollars or can I subtract 74 by 28 by 28? I can do that, right? There won't be no issues? Right, won't be any issues at all. I'm able to subtract 74 cents minus 28 cents minus 28 cents. I know I can do that. Watch this. If I just do that, 74 cents from the total here and I take away 28 minus 28, I can go ahead and subtract them both like that, 
or everybody, what's 28 plus 28? Hit me. Brendan, very quick there. Nakia, Skyler, the follow. Yep, that's going to be 56. Again, this right here is just subtracting 56. If I subtract this, just this, look at what happens. Okay, can't do that. That'll be 6. 14 minus 6 is 8. 6 minus 5 is 1. So my answer ends with 18 cents. And welcome to my TED Talk. So that's just one thing that you can do once you understand the process of the problem. Once you know exactly what you need to do, with enough practice, you know when you can stop. And you can get problems done that you already thought were easy in much less time. Everybody, am I making a point here or is this a waste of time? Am I making a point or is this a waste of time? Okay, sounds good. So for the for those of you, I see some questions here and I'm more than happy to answer them, I got you. So I see here, can you do that with every similar question? Yeah, Brian, I would definitely just, if you know exactly what you need to do, and you know the great thing is once you know exactly what you need to do, you know what you can expect your answers to look like then. The moment I knew that I had to subtract, I was like, okay, look at these decimal places. They're all different. I'm just gonna go ahead and subtract the decimal place and I'm good. And then the answer that has it, it has it. But you gotta be brave enough and, and well-versed enough to know that that'll work because you can't be here sitting here like, I hope this works. Like, no, you have to know why it's gonna work. And it's because you know what you need to do, subtract, and you know what the ends of the answers are. So you know you only need to subtract a decimal, not everything else. So one more time, guys, let me know if that makes a little more sense. It's about, it's about basically taking less time once you know what you need to do. Yeah, Amber, we could have done either way. We could have done either way. So subtracting 28 cents and subtracting 28 cents again turns out to be subtracting 56 cents. So instead of doing minus 28 then minus 28, I just subtract 56. So let me know if that makes a little more sense to you. <laughs> I got you, Roberto. <laughs> and um, Lewis, let me know if you caught that too. Cool. So are you guys ready for another question here? And Aiden, on the other hand, you may try adding up all the answers and determining which one offers it. Absolutely, Aiden. But using that, you might need to do more calculation than need be. Because if A doesn't work, wasted time. B doesn't work, wasted time. In this case, since you do know you need to subtract, that would be the faster way for sure. Cool. Let's go ahead and jump on into another one here, my party people. Let's go ahead. Let's have some fun. So let me get this timer up. Remember, do your best. That's all you need to worry about. Do your best. And then we'll check the work and get better problem by problem. Three, two, and one. Let's go.
looking at our final four, three, two, one. Go ahead, put those answers in. Put a question mark next to your answer if it is a guess. Put a question mark next to it so I know that it is a guess for you. And then let's see what we got. Okay, so we have some people taking guesses with Bs and Cs. I've uh, got some Ds in there that are looking confident is what they say. Some Cs looking confident as well. Okay, looks like it's a debate between C and D. Got some A's in there. I multiplied, I tried. Hey, that's all I want. All I want for you to do is try. That's all you can do. All right, so someone here says, I'm not going to shout you out because uh, I want to marry you, but it says, okay, I don't know pounds to ounces. So who here feels the same? Who here feels like they don't have a solid grip on their conversions? So again, you're not alone, right? You're not, that's a lot of people. Not alone, not alone, not alone. Again, the, the, the quicker we can admit that we're not doing what we need to do, the quicker we can get to doing it. So here's the thing, everybody. Um, do you have control over the ASVAB itself? No, right? You don't have control over who writes the test and all that stuff. You don't. You don't. Um, do you at least have some sense of what you might need to study? You know, like unit conversions. Do you, generally speaking, do you know that that might be something you need to prepare for? Right? Generally speaking, that might be something you need to prepare for. Um, you've seen it in my class. You've seen it in other places. So with that said, is knowing your unit conversions within your control? Boom, there it is. That was a $70 therapy session in three seconds. So here we go, guys. We need to get into the mode of understanding what needs to be done. Your unit conversions, there are no excuses for not knowing them, unless like today is your first day studying for the ASVAC. So if you're in the program and you go to arithmetic reasoning unit three, <laughs> I can't look at the comments right now. If we are in arithmetic reasoning and you go to unit three, um, basically the first three or four activities are going to be flashcard sets that are going to help you learn your unit conversion formulas. So pounds to ounces, feet to yards, feet and inches, everything you need to know is in there and all the practice. It's basically gamified for you to learn as quickly as you need to. So with that said, do you promise that you will, it's all good, Grizzle, but do you promise that you will get in there and make sure that you can control what you can control? Sounds good. Hey, Amanda, welcome in. So again, control what you can control. It's the, it's the biggest thing you gotta focus on, man. You can't control everything, but you have a lot of power here. So. First things first, remind me, including my new folks, what's the first thing we do with every word problem? So first thing we do, RTQ, read the question. Again, read the question right here. How? How much should you expect to pay to ship the item? Everybody, even if you don't know exactly what you need to do, is it very clear that just by that one question sentence, it sounds like we're trying to ship something and we're calculating the cost to ship it? Great. Is that something you can imagine yourself doing? Going to the post office and shipping an item? Is that something that normal people would expect to be able to do? Right. So this situation shouldn't seem very foreign. My party people, quick question. Did anybody feel more comfortable about the problem because you could put yourself in the shoes of the problem? And that's another point I want to make. Here's another tip for word problems. Anytime you can relate to the context or imagine what's going on, do so. Do so. One of my biggest, uh, one of my favorite phrases in math is when in doubt, draw it out. You know, whenever you are in doubt about the problem, try to imagine it, see what's going on. So, with that said, we know that we want, again, the cost to ship. So, how, I don't know how much it's going to be, but we'll figure that out. Step two. Now that we know what we're looking for, well, now I only care about the information that's related to shipping that item. Here we go, let's read. You'd like to ship an item that weighs one pound, 12 ounces, okay? The post office charges $10 for the first four ounces and then $3.50 per ounce thereafter. Okay, so it sounds like there's some weird way that this works, but they're throwing some numbers out there 
and they're saying like it, it costs this much for this many ounces, this much for that many ounces. Everybody, does it sound like we're going to be multiplying here? Does it sound like we might be multiplying? And here's the thing. The answer is yes. But for those of you that are not quite sure why it's yes, here's why. Think about it in real life. You know, they're saying, hey, you'd like to ship an item that weighs this much, but they're charging you $350 per ounce. Let's think about this in something that's a little more relatable. Let's go ahead and say you're at the store and you're buying sandwiches. You're at some deli. They sell sandwiches right there to go. You're running late and it's uh, $5 per sandwich. Everybody, quick question. Quick question. If I go to that store, $5 per sandwich, I buy three sandwiches. How much am I paying? Question, go. 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15. You guys, a lot of us here were able to do that at the snap of a finger. Again, that's more relatable. That situation is a little more understandable. Okay, let's go ahead and say you're buying Snickers. Bars of Snickers, hopefully this doesn't get copyrighted, but let's say it's $2 for each king size Snickers. You buy 10. How much are you paying? $2. I said $2 per king size Snicker. <laughs> Yep, it's going to be 20. It's going to be 20. Um, and you just did some quick math, right? You just multiply two times 10 and there you go. So let me ask again, does it make a little more sense now that we are going to be multiplying because they're saying, hey, we're charging you $3.50 an ounce right here. And so it sounds like we're going to be multiplying the $3.50 times the number of ounces and we're good. Is that fair? Do we understand that a little better now? Good. Cool. And again, you guys are totally within your right to say kind of like you did or say no still, totally fine. But let's get to understanding what we need to do to achieve this goal because it's not as simple as just saying multiply these things together. There are some rules here, everybody, particularly watch this. It says, the, I'm going to focus on this right here. I'm going to highlight this in blue right here. I'm going to highlight all of this in blue. And it says the post office charges $10 for the first four ounces. And then it says $3.50 per ounce thereafter. So everyone, is it the entire one pound and 12 ounce? We have, we have one pound, 12 ounces. Is it the entire one pound and 12 ounces that we are multiplying by the $3.50? Okay, in droves here, I see that we're saying no, and that is absolutely correct. That is not the case here. It is not the case that we're just going to, you know, just take the whole thing and multiply by 350. There are a little bit of a, uh, there are conditions in this problem here. So let's understand the rules here. The rules are, again, one, $10 for the first four ounces. For the first four ounces and then $3.50 after. So with that said, everybody, let me clarify so that way we have a good, neat plan before we start doing all the calculation. What this means right over here is that we're gonna do $3.50 times whatever's left. Whatever is left. Is that fair to y'all? Is that fair to y'all? Cool. Again, $10 for the first four ounces. And then whatever's left after that, we're going to multiply that by 350. Now that we have a game plan, now it's time to use our knowledge of math to do the actual calculating. Notice that in word problems, we have the actual setup and we have the calculations there's a difference, and I'll talk more about that in the next question. But here's what we need to focus our attention on now. How many ounces is that? Can anybody tell me one pound? Uh, how many ounces is that? Appreciate you. So for those of you who asked that question earlier, again, no shame in asking that, and no shame in saying that you didn't know, but one pound is 16 ounces. One pound is 16 ounces. So what we can do is we can convert the one pound right here 
that's going to end up being 16 ounces. And we also still have the 12 ounces from before. So my party people, how many total ounces do we have to ship? Right, we have 28 total ounces. Everybody, do you understand that we got the 16 by merely converting the pound to 16 ounces? Just making sure that we are not going to come back to this point in confusion. Great. Sounds good. So we have 28 total ounces. So that's the total shipment. Okay. We are good then. We are good to continue. We are in great shape now. We are going to take a look at this part right here. $10 for the first four ounces. Okay, everybody. We had 28 ounces. How many ounces are left? That's right. 24 ounces left. Everybody, so far, how much have we paid? Excuse me, 18 ounces left. Sorry about that. Or 24, what? Let me get that eraser. There we go. 24 ounces left. But yeah, how much have we paid so far? We have paid $10 so far for the first four ounces. Now it's time to figure out how much we got to pay for what's left because there's a different type of charge on that. So everyone, how much was left again? 24 ounces. We will do the math now. 350 times 24. And let's get to work. So we'll go ahead and do this here on the side. 3.50 times 24. And everybody, just to make sure you know, everybody, 3.50 or $3.50 is the same as saying what? To make this easier for ourselves. Right. 3.50, same thing as 3.5. You can always erase any extra zeros after the last digit, after the last decimal place. You can always erase them. 3.50, 3.5, same thing. What I'll do, that makes it easier for me. 5 times 4, that's going to be 20. 3 times 4, that'll be 12. Carry the 2, that'll be 14. Next row here. And again, we go ahead and put that zero there to mark the next digit. But we have 5 times 2, and that's going to be 10. Then three times two, that'll be six. Carry the one, that is seven. Add this back up and we have zero, four, and eight. And my party people, what is the last thing we need to do to multiply decimals correctly? Because we just ignored those decimals in the beginning. What do we do after that? Right, we bring the decimal back. So we just had one decimal place here. So we'll bring one decimal back right there. Boom. So we see here $84. That's how much those, you know, the extra 24 ounces costs. And so here's what some people might do. They might get really excited, right? We calculated, we got 84. Everybody, do we see 84 as an answer? Absolutely. Well, yeehaw partner, that's the answer, right? That's the answer, right? Yeah. No. We forgot the what? Yeah, we forgot the 10. This is something that a lot of people suffer from. They forget what the final result should be. The final result should be the cost of the first four ounces plus the cost of the rest. The cost of the first four ounces is $10. The cost of the rest is 84. So the total cost, everyone, would be $94. We'll do 84 plus 10. And that's going to give us $94. And that's why D is the correct answer. Now, be honest, admit, did anybody here pick uh, C, yeah, thinking that they were doing things the right way, they were feeling pretty sweet, and they attacked it, and then turns out, yeah, be honest, be honest. And I believe I had a... Uh, B potentially set up as the answer if you would have just multiplied the entire 28 uh, by 3.5. Yeah, they absolutely. So here's the thing. Here's the thing, guys. The goal of the ASVAB is, is not to trick you. It's to filter out who is more adaptable to these different situations, who is able to actually take in the necessary information to make informed decisions and produce solutions to problems. That's what this is about. They're not trying to trick you. 
They're just trying to see how apt you are to do the job that they want you to fill. That's really it. They're just trying to see how prepared you are. So, you know, we don't have to, um, you know, talk about them as, as if they're the devil. It's, you know, you're here to take a test. You're here to see where you are and just always know that you can grow from where you are. Cool. Yeah. Keywords are necessary. Keywords are way too necessary here. So any questions before we move on to the next one? Let me just go back here, double check here. I'm guess C, big C, pretty confident. Cool. Looks like we're in good shape so far, guys. Great job. So again, yeah, if you got C, if you got C, the reason you got C is because you just simply forgot to add the $10 back from before. Remember, the first four ounces were 10 bucks. So you don't count those first four ounces because you already paid $10 for it. Uh, Nakia, how much and how differ? Do uh, how, how do they differ? How much and how many? So basically, there are some things that you would use the word how much for, and there are certain things that you would say how many. So for example, let's talk about water. Water versus cups. You wouldn't say how many water do you have? You would say how much water. And then for cups, you wouldn't say how much cups. You would say how many cups. So it's just a grammatical thing. How much and how many mean the same thing. And Lewis, it's okay to take it nice and slow to learn what you need to learn. It's totally fine. And I'm going to go ahead and start the next question. But Lewis, I'm going to go ahead and talk to you for sure. But here we go, guys. Two minutes on this one. Get started right now. Timer's up. Now, Lewis, here's the thing. You don't want to worry about feeling slow at all. You're working at your pace. I want you to, again, take this with an honest approach and just admit, like, hey, are, are the pacing, is it feeling like I understand it after some time or am I completely lost? Because if you need to take the extra time, take the extra time. It's all good. And that's correct, Justin. And Coriolis, um, so when you have the phrase per pound or per something, the word per really, um, that does signify that to get the total amount, you will be multiplying. So for example, if I say, hey, um, it's $4 per burger, you know that if you multiply that by the number of burgers, you'll get the total cost. So the word per does give away that you need to multiply moving forward. And that is time, my party people. Go ahead, put those answers in, put those answers in. Go ahead. Boom, 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 boom. And again, if it's, a que if it's a guess, put a question mark next to it. And I do need to just quick disclaimer, um, whether it's in this chat or if you're watching live on YouTube and you're commenting, um, please don't post about you know study groups or this or that. I can't vouch for anything outside of what's going on in here. So I'm not gonna be liable for anything that happens outside of here. Um, any messages about forming study groups or where you're from or what's your number, I'm going to delete those messages promptly and remove you from the, uh, the study session. So let's go ahead and focus on the session itself. That way we can have a good time. So with that, let's go ahead and get back to it. Let's go ahead here. Uh, the sign up thing, Brian, I'll go ahead and get that to you in a moment between now and the next question. But let's go ahead and get into this one. Who knows what topic? 
That is correct, Mundo, Landa. This is proportions. So if you are here, and again, you're in my program, um, let me go ahead and put this in for you. Arithmetic reasoning, unit two, proportions. That's what this question is about. So uh, if you are looking to, since more people are commenting about the program, um, there's the link in the chat box, but let's go ahead and get back into it. So this is proportions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the question itself. How much should Stephanie be paid if she works 36 hours at the same pay rate? Now, everyone, there's a way to tell that this is a proportion question, two ways really. And it's really gonna come about from the main idea of proportions. So everybody, my party people, if you've gone through proportions with me, what's the main idea? What's the main idea of proportions? See, I ask these questions so many times that you guys sometimes have this copied and pasted ready to go. Compare the same things in the same way. So if you've never heard me or seen me solve a proportion question, you're in luck. I got you. Write this down here. Proportions. Write this down. Do yourself this favor. And while I write this down, Landa, do me a favor. Uh, tell me, tell the group here, does it work when you focus on solving problems through the main idea? Does it help? So compare the same things in the same way. So compare the same things in the same way. All right. So with that, let's go ahead. Let's get it done here. So that's the main idea with proportions. Write that down. Compare the same things in the same way because I'm going to ask you that towards the end of this question here. So. Again, how do we know that this is a proportion? Well, let's just go ahead and start by reading the information. Because when I read the information, I'm going to tell you exactly what that means. Watch this. So Stephanie is who we're talking about in this question. Let's read. So Stephanie is paid $154 for eight hours of work. Okay, everybody, before I continue, did the first sentence compare how much money you make for the time that you work? This much money for this much time. Is that what the first sentence said? Okay, great. So I think we can see that again, a comparison was made. We compared the amount of money you make for the time that you work. Okay, let's read the second sentence. How much should Stephanie be paid money if she works 36 hours at the same pay rate, the time she works? Everyone, do we see that in both sentences, there is a comparison being made between how much money you make for the time that you work. Is that there? Is that apparent? Is that clear? Cool. And that's what that means. So we see the same things being compared. Now it's up to us to actually compare them in the same way. So we're the ones that are comparing the same things in the same way. We just need to make sure that the same things are indeed being compared. Once we know that, then we know we have a proportion, a relationship between money and time, a relationship between money and time, we're looking for the money. So with that said, here we go. Here's how you set up a proportion. We see that we have $154 for eight hours of work. So I can go ahead and say that we want how much money, I'm gonna use a blue here, paid how much money for 36 hours. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna write a fraction here and I'm gonna say, this is money and that's X dollars. And then I have 36 down here and that's gonna say hours. On the right side of this proportion, again, all a proportion is is literally two fractions that are the same, two ratios that are the same, two comparisons that are the same. So we see here that it says $154. Let me make this a little thicker again. And then it says eight hours. So let me just, again, re-emphasize the point for anybody here who's learning proportions for the first time or refreshing. The idea is compare the same things in the same way. We have dollars compared to hours, dollars compared to hours. We see that the order is the same. Again, the same way. If I were to put eight hours up top 
and then the 154 on the bottom, it would not work. Would not work because you have money to time, not time to money. So we need to make sure that if it's money to time, it's money to time. Yes or no, does that make a little more sense for you when it comes to, again, just following that rule, compare the same things in the same way. That's really what I care about. Again, making sure that this makes intuitive sense in English here, not just math jargon. Okay, so how have we been taught to solve proportions, everybody? This is another situation where I want to make your lives easier. When you know exactly what to do, how can we do it faster? So what is this? Yeah, we need to go ahead and cross, multiply, and divide. That's the main way that most people are taught. You know, and you tell me if this looks familiar. We would cross, multiply, x times 8. That would be 8x. And then we would do 36 times 154. Um, does anybody know what that is off the top of their head? 55, 44. I mean, look, I got to do some confirming here real quick. All right, let's go ahead. Uh, we got 154 times 36. Got to figure this out now. So we got 4 times 6, 24. 5 times 6 is 30. Carry the 2, 32. 1 times 6 is 6. Carry the 3 is 9. Can't put a 0 there. 4 times 3, that's 12. 5 times 3 is 15. Carry the 1 is 16. Then 1 times 3 is 3. Carry the 1 is 4. Now we have to go ahead and add 4 plus 4. Okay, that's 4. That's 15, carry the one, five. So five, five, four, four. Did I stress anybody out going that fast? <laughs> Did that stress anybody out? Because I want to know that you're able to do that calculation quickly if you need to. That's really what the point of that was. But now the secondary point that I want to make is, again, can we make things easier when we can? Because we're still not even done. We have 8x equals 5544. Now we got to go ahead and do what to both sides now? What do we have to do? What do we have to do? Right here. What do we got to do? Come on, don't be lazy. Divide what? Divide what? Divide by 8? Where? On my lawn, on my roof. Divide by 8 on both sides. I appreciate you being concise and clear. So this is going to be right here. Divide by eight on both sides. And now we'll see what the answer is. That cancels out. Well, we got to do a little bit of long division, right? A little bit of long division. And again, I'm only proving a point by doing this this way. I'm only proving a point. So we see that eight goes into five zero times. 55, that'll be six times. Seven left, carry the four. That'll be uh, eight into 74. What will that be? Well, that's going to be 9 for 72. And then we have 8 into 24. 8 into 24, that'll be 3. And again, so, and thanks for letting me know that you're not as confident as you want to be at Long Division, Coriolis, because I want to reveal how, like, this can come up at a moment's notice. You don't have time to remember how to do it. You just need to be ready to do it. So, Throughout that entire process, who here is comfortable, who here is maybe not as comfortable with working with all of the processes that we did, the large multiplication, the long division, and doing it with those larger numbers? Are you confident at doing that at a moment's notice, or do you feel like that's something that you need to work on? Gotcha. Yeah, thanks for being honest, guys. Like, seriously, thank you for being honest. This is something that we need to work on. Let's take it seriously. So I don't want you taking five, six minutes on a problem like this because we're doing long multiplication and long division. I don't want you taking that long at all. What I want you to be able to take advantage of is the fact that there's always a more efficient way to do things. So for those of you who have been to my classes, you know exactly what I'm about to do. We got 693 is the answer. And that's C. But I'm going to show you how when we were at this point right here, we could have actually got to the answer fairly quickly, fairly quickly. So let's go ahead and let's get that done. 
I'm going to copy this page. So feel free to take a picture of this page here because I'm going to just make a new one right below it. Again, feel free to take that little picture there if you need to. Let me move this up. And I'll point this over to this. Take your picture, feel free. Now I'm gonna show you again how to reduce the amount of time that you're taking on a problem like this. Okay, that should be enough time for a picture. So allow me to get some more space. And here's where I'm gonna focus my attention. The X over 36 equals 154 over eight. So everyone, if you've been to my classes on these before, What's the one S word that you can always do, uh, hopefully, a lot of times, with fractions? What's something you can do with fractions sometimes? Yeah, sometimes you can simplify. Sometimes you can simplify. Everybody, uh, would it be easier on your soul if instead of multiplying 36 times 154, it was maybe like, you know, maybe 18 times 2? Well, what if it was it's just a little easier? What if it was just a little easier, okay? Right? So here's what I mean by that. First and foremost, a lot of you think that I, when I mean simplifying, you mean I'm going between these two numbers here, which you can if you want to, but there's actually a slightly faster way. Everybody, first and foremost, when it comes to equations, is this true? Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. Is that true? Okay, cool. So what I'm going to show you next, no lies. I will not lie at all. Is it true then, if you're doing the same thing to both sides, is it true that I can divide this denominator by four and I can divide this denominator by four? As long as I'm dividing the same thing on both sides, I'm good, right? Yeah. And so here's the rule or here's what you may not have known. When it comes to proportions, yeah, you can simplify vertically with one fraction or the other one. Or you can also simplify horizontally both denominators. You can simplify them at the same time or both numerators. You can do that. Absolutely. And look at how it's going to give us the answer again. 693 is the answer. Look how we can get there with much easier numbers. Everyone, 36 divided by 4 is what? Thirty-six divided by 40. Uh, excuse me. I don't know why this is not. Sometimes it doesn't agree. Yeah, doesn't feel like working. That's fine. But yeah, 36 divided by 4, that's going to be 9. So we have ourselves x over 9. And everybody, 8 divided by 4 is what? That's going to be 2. This is a little easier. And we can make this easier still. Because everybody, is it true that we can simplify 154 over 2? Since those are both even numbers. Yeah. Everyone, what's 154 divided by 2? Do you know what that might be? What's 154 divided by 2? That'll be 77. And one way we can get that is you can go ahead and go, hey, 70 times 2, that's 140. 80 times 2, that's 160, too much. And you can kind of play around with some estimation strategies. Or if you know that 150 divided by 2 is 75, then you go two more for 154, which is 77. You could also do long division if you wanted to, but that would kind of defeat the purpose. It's better to know your calculation skills up front. But all I'm saying is, if you simplify at the top now, what you'll now have is x over nine equals, let me change this over here, 77 over one. Now do you see that if you go starting here, if you quickly notice, oh, divide by four, bam. Oh, divide by two, bam. Now you're here and all you got to do to solve the problem, x times one is x, nine times 77, what's that going to be? You do that, seven times nine is 63, seven times nine is 63, plus the six is 69. And you have yourself $693. That is your final answer, and you can get that very, very quickly if you know all the different strategies that you can use. Simplifying vertically, simplifying horizontally, before you actually do the cross multiplication. Does that make a little more sense to you? Again, all I did, as dragged out, as long and dragged out as that was, 
what I did was, hey, we can simplify first before we cross multiply. Simplify the proportion whenever you can. Yeah, and Remy, you absolutely, so did anybody first simplify 154 over eight and decide to divide the two out first? Who decided to divide the two out of the 154 and eight first between these two right here? Yeah, Landy did it my way. But again, does it lead to the same answer, 693? Yep, absolutely. And that's what shows really, hey, as long as you're doing it in a way that follows mathematical rules, it is the right way. And there's always more than one right way. So knowing the rules is really what gives you power in that solution process. That's really it. So I wanna give you guys a chance to take another picture here for this one, but we're gonna dive into the next one right away. And by the way, I just wanna make sure it's known, you guys are doing a great job so far. Um, the way that you guys are interacting, making sure you're paying attention, really love seeing that. All right, cool. Five more seconds, and we're going to start it on the next one. Here we go. Three, two, and one. And timer's up, and face is out of the way. Get after it. You got this. Still got 20 seconds here. And time is up. Boom. All right, put those answers in, put a question mark next to your answer if it is a guess. Boom, sounds good. All right, so with that said, let me let this person in and let's go ahead and bring myself back into frame. All right, so um, obviously this may seem like a similar question. Uh, everybody, what topic is this? We've seen this one in today's class so far. Yeah, same topic, proportions, right? Same topic, proportions. And let me go ahead, like I told you I would do, pop quiz. How do we know that this is a proportion? How do we know? Can you explain it? Again, one of the biggest tells of confidence is your ability to explain the work. Notice that everybody was willing to say proportions very quickly, but not everybody's lining up to say what's going on. There we go. Comparing the same things in the same way. Comparing the same things in the same way. And so, uh, Brian, I got your question there. Um, so there is my phone number. Feel free to text me. I got you. So with that, let's go ahead and get into it here, my party people. So we have a question here. It says, how many females are there if there are 12 males present? Everybody, true or false, in the question sentence, we are comparing females to males. Again, in the question sentence, 
we are comparing females to males, yes or no? Cool, sounds good. So we'll go ahead and say that right there. We are saying how many females, blank females, compared with 12 males. Okay, sounds great. Now, what do they say in the first sentence? Well, they say at a local YMCA, there are five males for every 45 females. So let's write that here. Let's go ahead and take it in blue. Five males for every 45 females. Now, I'm in a second here, I'm going to show you uh, something. And I believe that I did everything correctly, but it's possible that I didn't. I want you to potentially point out what I may have done wrong. Because everybody, before I continue, don't answer, don't tell me what the mistake was. Tell me this. Are we comparing the same things, males and females, in both scenarios? Are we comparing males and females? I'm not asking the other question. I'm asking, are we comparing males and females? So let's make sure that for those of us here who are new to proportions or refreshing, they know exactly what I mean when we say compare the same things in the same way. Watch this. I'm going to mark this as X. So I'll say X over 12. Okay. One to two. And I'll compare it the same way, right? We'll go five to 45. Everybody, this is incorrect. Can you tell me why? We're not comparing in the same way. What does that mean? In the context of the problem, what does that mean? So when you're saying not comparing in the same way, not comparing what in the same way? Right, we're not comparing the males to females in the same way. Notice here, it said females then males. Here it says males then females. My party people, does order matter when you're writing proportions? Does the order matter? 100% yes, absolutely does matter. So to make sure that we are adhering to these rules and doing things the right way, let's do it the right way. X is for females, 12 is males. So I will need to write 45 up top because that is females up top and males in the denominator. Does that make a little more sense to you? Especially if you were a little confused in the beginning. Awesome, 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 awesome. So there is a long way of doing this and there is a short way. The long way is cross multiplication and division. The short way is understanding shortcuts to proportions. When you notice convenient situations, my party people, Remember that proportions are just comparisons that are done in the same way. So here's another part of what that means. Let me rewrite the proportion. My part of you, if I'm comparing males down here and females up here, if I'm comparing, how do I go from five to 45? What number do I multiply five by to get to 45? Right, that's a multiplying factor of nine. If we multiply the denominator here by five, we go up, or by nine, excuse me, we go up to get that 45, great. And everybody, yes or no, true or false, with proportions, we are comparing the same things in the same way. Okay, great. So here's what that means. What that means is, hey, males to females, you multiply by nine. So guess what? Males to females multiply by nine. If you know your multiplication tables, what is 12 times nine? 108. X equals 108. And there's your answer right there. Just by doing 12 times nine right there, your answer is instantly found and you can save a lot of time. Like that's what really um, a lot of these problems today are going to be about saving time. Um, and we still will get into a lot of arithmetic, or a lot of problem solving too. Um, but in the next class tomorrow, you guys better get ready for a good one tomorrow because I'm also going to be testing out some new uh, template questions because you guys know in the program you have access to over 15,000 practice questions with solutions. So I'm building um, more sets of questions. So we should have by the end of next week, 
another set of about 1500 in there with brand new questions and scenarios. So get ready. Um, but with that, even if you would have simplified first, you would have seen the same exact thing that we did. Because again, it's about saving time. So my party people right over here, X over 12. And 45 over five, when we simplify right over here and we say, hey, divide by five, divide by five. Well, guess what? We're going to have X over 12 being equal to nine over one. And then when you cross multiply, it's literally the same thing that we just said that we would do. Same thing. So with that, take your screenshot. Take your screenshot. We're going to do another one here coming up shortly. Three, two, and one. Let's go. Yeah, theory, absolutely okay. Yep, that is absolutely okay. And Evan, no, we wouldn't divide five on both sides because in that previous question, it was a vertical simplification, 45 and five. You can divide both of those by five. We wouldn't divide both sides by five because when you looked at the left side, the 12, 12 can't be divided by five. So we wouldn't go that way. Hey, don't say we're lost yet. Again, compare the same things in the same way. See if we can make that idea fit. I'm going to tell you right now, this is a proportion question. The first two words say the ratio, so we should know that. But can we still stick to the main idea? And three, two, one, and time, my party people. Right on, right on. All right, put those answers in. Put a question mark next to your answer if it is a guess. All right, let's go ahead and bring it back here. So um, everybody, do you agree that this is a proportion question? Do you agree? And again, say no if it's not clear to you that it's a proportion, um, but you let me know. Yes or no, is it clear that this is a proportion? Okay. Cool. So let's go ahead and explore. Let's guarantee why we know it's a proportion, number one. And number two, well, what makes this problem different? What makes this problem harder? Because when we compare the same things in the same way, we have to make sure it's the same things lined up. But there's a little bit of an issue here because let's start with the question sentence. Look at how this is a little different. So first of all, again, the problem starts off by saying the ratio, so it hints off that it's a proportion question. But if you read here, it says, everybody, how many red items are in the bowl? So for us here, I'm going to say blank red items. And then it says 144 what? Help me out, guys. 144 what? What's the comparison here? Red to what? Be, be very... You know, put your glasses on. I'll zoom in for you. That's 100x. That's 200x. Is it clear now? Red compared to what? Total. Sounds good. And it's still getting bigger. So there it is. We are comparing how many red to 144 total. Now, why did I emphasize that? Because again, when it comes to proportions, we have to compare the same things in the same way. 
Now, let's read the next, uh, for the next part of the problem here, the information. It says the ratio of green items to red items in a bowl is 6 to 30. So it's saying here in this part, ratio of green to red, 6 to 30, the order matters. So they're saying green to red. That is 6 to 30. So another way that you can write that, if you want to write it in the same way as above, it would be 6 green and then 30 red. That's how you would read it. But here is the problem, everybody. Some people may notice that, whoa, the reds aren't lined up. So is it okay if I start off, even though it's not done completely, is it okay if I swap the green and red so it's the same order? No, red first. Is that okay with y'all? Okay. Now, what's the problem that we're facing right now, guys? What's the problem? Look at it. What's the problem that we're facing? This is where we need to have this conversation. We need to talk about what we're doing here. Right, Santiago, that's right. We're not comparing the same things. We're trying to do it in the same way, red to red, but then we have total and then we have green. That's the issue that we need to tackle. So if you were lost on this one, but you were able to follow along in the other ones, this is really the part that makes or breaks our understanding here. So here's the problem. We have total on one side, green on the other. My party people, how do you get total? How do you get total? We need to add. Simple as that. We need to add. So let's go ahead and add. What do you mean? Well, if we're saying that we have 30 red and then six green, well, add them together. 30 red plus six green gives us what total, everybody? 36 total. That's right. That's right. And that's what we need to use. That's what we need to use. We can't let the six sit there. We have to replace it with 36 for the total. Before I continue, yes or no, did that make sense? Because we have to compare the same things in the same way, and the question tells us read the total, we had to make sure that the second comparison had to be red to total. Because we had red to green, we added red and green together to get that total, the total, the sum of the parts. Um, that's something that everyone needs to really comprehend because moving forward, now it's easy as pie. Because now we're good. I'm going to say red over 144 equals, then we have 30 over 36. So everyone, do we see how even though we took a little more time on that setup, boom, now we have made sense, at least a little more sense than before uh, on this problem. Yes or no, are we good on that? Perfect. All right. So with that said, now let's tackle the solution here. Let's tackle this. My party people, right there. My party people, we don't need to cross multiply and divide. Remember, before you cross multiply and divide, we should always look to simplify first. That's really what we want to do. So with that said, is there something that we can simplify pretty straightforward that you would see pretty clearly? Yeah, you could definitely divide by two on the top and bottom here. You could also divide by two right there and there. You could absolutely do that and that, but take a look at 30 over 36. You can divide by something a little bigger than two. Yeah, we can divide them both by six. Let's try that out. Let's try that out. So let's take that, divide by six, divide by six. And so we're going to end up having R over 144 equals five over six. So that's what we ended up getting. Okay. Now, is there anything else that we could potentially simplify? Or do you want to just go ahead and straight up multiply and divide? Yeah, we could definitely try the 6 and the 144. Because I know that since they're both even, they're both at least divisible by 2. And one thing that you should know is that, yes, 
uh, six does go into 144. Um, that is going to be 24 times. Um, but if you didn't know that with mental math at the top of your head, no worries. We can just go ahead and divide. It's all good. You can divide it quickly. Six goes into 144. Six goes into 14 two times. Six goes into 24 four times. And we're done. So right there, that would end up being if we divided both of these by six. Again, we're dividing both denominators by the same number. You're doing the same thing to both sides. You are allowed to do that, especially since it is division. And so you're good. So that would end up being R over 24 equals 5 over 1. Everybody, is this a much easier proportion to solve than uh, that? It even looks bigger. There's so much more to do, right? Like there's so It's so much of a better time. And so I'm going to zoom on out a little bit so you can see the whole comparison. But now we just go ahead and do 24 multiplied by 5. Everybody, R equals what? What's 24 times 5? A little bit of mental math. You can go ahead and do 24, or excuse me, 20 times 5, 100. 4 times 5 is 20. So you have 100 plus 20, which is 120. Boom. And there you are. Joel, what happened? What happened? But yeah, the answer there would be 120, and that is C. I did 6 over 36 compared to 30 over 144. Ah, that would have been the issue. Because 6 compared to 36 is the green to total, and then the 30 over 144. Oh, that may not have worked. Yeah, no. Yeah, that wouldn't have worked. No worries. And so, Latasha, for some reason, I wanted to turn it into a fraction instead of cross multiplication. Um, it's that's still valid. It's still valid, but it depends on the way that you set it up. Um, since this is a proportion, it's two fractions equal to each other. Okay, so if you are lost, right there, write that down. Arithmetic reasoning. If you're in the program unit two, but write down. Proportions, proportions, all right? That is what this one is about. Um, so really quick, for everybody who is in the program, I need to make sure that you know this. So yes or no, have you done um, any speed drills in the math basics or any unit checkpoints in the AR or MK courses yet? Yes or no? Yeah, I'm, I'm, ooh, this is so much better than eight months ago. Yes, the majority here is saying yes, but I do still see some of us saying no. So take, what, 15, 20 seconds. I'm going to show you how to access all of the resources that you have available to you. Um, it's way more than just the recordings. So if you're in the program, pay attention real quick. I'm going to go ahead and show you my background. Yes or no, can you see uh, the website in the background? All right, so really quick, um, here's what you got to do, guys. If you're in the program, all you got to do when you log in it's going to show you like, hey, welcome in, person. Click arithmetic reasoning, and it's going to pop up. It's going to show you your entire progress dashboard. So pretty much it'll tell you all the units that you have completed, all the ones you still have left to go. And to find everything you need, boom, there's unit two. There's proportions. Um, it'll tell you how many stars you have on it and what you need to do to keep improving. Um, so like, for example, if we want to just take a look at a speed drill, what a unit checkpoint looks like, the great thing about it is, Every time you reset it, you get new questions, new numbers. On top of that, every time that you uh, do it, you get a feedback report with a step-by-step -step solution for every single question you do. You know, it took me months to work on this, but this is the key to making sure that you can build confidence because you're going to be timed and you have nowhere to hide. It's really going to show you where you are. And so look, I'll go ahead and retake it. It says unit four checkpoint percents. I'll click that button that says ready to start. And then it'll take a moment. Basically, it generates the questions for you, and then after it's ready, spits it out. So this is for proportions, but you're going to see that you have a timer up there, and your job is to go ahead and do these questions as quickly and as competently as you can. And once you're done, go all the way to the end, click Submit, and here's the awesome thing. Okay, don't give up. I guessed on all of them. I didn't even answer all of them, so I failed. But you hit Feedback Report, and here's the great thing about this. What do we want? What do we have? What's the connection? 
everything lined up for you step by step with the numbers from the problem telling you exactly how to get to the answer. Every single question, every single time that you do it. So it's not one of those situations where, you know, you're on some random website doing questions and you don't know how to get to the answer. It's, yo, I got lessons, guided practice videos, worksheets, and step-by-step -step solutions for every single question that you do in exam format. So take advantage of it. You know, a lot of you guys here are paying for it, and I want to make sure that we are participating in all of this goodness. That way, even between classes, you are always growing. So simple question, did that make sense to those of you in the program and to those of you who aren't? No worries, Natalie, because I really do want to make sure that, you know, no matter where you are, like you're good. You know, you're good. You're always able to make progress. The speed drills really helped you out so much. Right on, Angelica. So, yeah, I got you, Colin. I'm glad you guys understand. So with that, let's go ahead and get back to the math goodness. Um, so we're going to do, how do we start the program? Oh, just stick around to the end of class. Um, I'll go ahead and share that. But I want to focus on some more practice questions here. I got y'all. But yeah, if you're interested, just stay to the end of class. I got you. So here's your next question. Random one here. Today's Tuesday. What day will it be 43 days from now? Go. <laughs> and if you answer this early and you're in the program, feel free to leave a comment in the chat box how those speed drills have helped your confidence. Oh, Alexander, what's up, boss? Awesome picture. Uh, to me, it's determining where you're weak and where you're strong and um, where you yourself didn't even know. Yeah, it's really about understanding your flaws and what you need to work on. Exactly. Yeah, and to answer your question there, um, how to get the Zoom links, if you're in the program, yes. You do get the link via text and email every single day of class, two hours before class starts. So if you're not getting the link and you're in the program, shoot me a text, I'll make sure it's fixed. Most times it's because someone, you may have just mistyped your phone number or your email, but I can go ahead and uh, fix that up nice and easy. All right, go ahead, put those answers in, my party people, put those answers in. All right, so switching it up. Let's see how we feel about this one. Scale of one to 10, where's your confidence at with this one? One being the lowest, 10 being the highest. Where's your confidence with this one? Justin, I did tally marks. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Let's, let's, let's be a little more modest with the, uh, with the glasses we're gonna use here. All right, so. Big brain moment. This is the first question you see on the ASVAB. And you look at this and you say, well, today's Tuesday. What day will it be 43 days from now? So I'm going to go ahead and whip out my calendar. We got Tuesday. So one day would be Wednesday. Then two days would be Thursday. Three days would be Friday. Then you have Saturday. Then you have Sunday. So I'm going to count and then we have, you know, we can go all the way back to uh, Monday. Okay, cool. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Wait, did I miscount? Do I got to do this all over again? You hear that silence? You don't want to do it that way. So let me go ahead. Let me go ahead and show you how to get this done in a much, much faster way. Um, here's the thing, everybody. What do we know? And let me let me best present this like this. What do we know about the days in a week? What do we know about the days in a week? Seven days in a week, right? So guess what, everybody? If today's Tuesday, what's the day seven days from now? Tuesday. What about 14 days from now? 
That's another seven days, right? What day is that going to be? Same, Tuesday. Oh, another seven days, 21. What day will it be 21 days? And 28 days? And 35 days? And 42 days? Ah, so we see that if we go in multiples of seven, everybody, we will land on the same day. Is that correct? If we operate in multiples of seven every seven days, that would be the same day that we started on Tuesday. Is that true? Is that true? Absolutely. So guess what, everybody? 42 is as close as we can get to 43 because that's 42. That's seven times six, six weeks. But that's the thing. That's four, day 42 is right there. That's all we need. Because guess what? What's day 43? Wednesday. Done. <laughs> right on, Darwin. Now the question is, did you get it the same way? Because here's the thing, everybody. Could you get away with actually doing tally marks? Could you actually reasonably count to 43 days? Could you reasonably count to 43 days? Yeah, you absolutely could reasonably count to 43 days. But here's the thing now. I'm going to switch the question up. I am going to change this question. I'm going to change this question to not 43. No, screw that. That's a little too easy. Let's change that to uh, 155 days. We're going to, to do that question all over again. And actually, I'm only going to give you one minute this time. Yeah, I'm feeling a little... Uh, a little brave today. Go ahead. One minute. What's the answer now? And yes, I made sure that when I did it, the answer is still one of these four. What day will it be? Yeah, let's see if you learned. <laughs> I got y'all, man. I got y'all. Don't worry. Do your thing. I got y'all. What happened was <laughs> we have 15 seconds left, 15 seconds left. And I was just trying to prove a point. Who here felt like they understood what was going on? Who here is still confused? Who here understood what was going on? Who here is still confused? So say I understand or say I'm still confused. Because this is a big reveal. This is something I want to talk about because the thing is, everybody, this is what it looks like to see something shiny and then, you know, you get wowed by some trick and then you think it makes sense. You think you can apply it, but it turns out you were actually memorizing that understanding. So let me show you how to understand. This is what's called a modulus question, or basically that's a fancy way of saying we're dealing with remainders. Here's how the remainder worked the first time we did it. This 155, let's move this over here on the side just for a moment. Remember the original problem? It was 43 days. Here's what we really did. On behind the scenes, this is what we were actually doing in our brains. We said, hey, how many weeks make up 43 days? Because we want to know how many weeks we're going. And what we found out was, hey, seven goes into 43 six times. So that is six weeks. But everybody, when you subtract, six times seven is 42. When you subtract that, what's the remainder? What is the remainder? The remainder was one. The remainder was one, and that is one remaining day. We didn't have enough to make a full week again. We have one remaining day. So think about it like this in the previous question. In the original question, 43 days, that would be six weeks. So starting on Tuesday, six weeks, it's Tuesday still, and then one remaining day, Wednesday. Yes or no? Does that make a little bit of sense there? Does that make a little bit of sense? Awesome. Now take a look at this. Let's do the same thing for the 155. Today's Tuesday. Let's see how many weeks until we get to 155. So if we do that, 
7 divided into 155. 7 goes into 15 two times. Drop the 5. 7 goes into 15 two times. And this is what we have. We have 22 weeks. So if we start on Tuesday, still on Tuesday, but then one more day, Wednesday. Boom. And the answer would have been the exact same. Would have been Wednesday, just the same. Does that make a little more sense there? Yeah, so that's a remainder question. So a similar way that this question could be presented to you could be, hey, it is, let's go ahead and say, 8 a.m. What hour will it be 250 hours from now? That should be a problem that is very doable. It should be very doable because if you go ahead and divide by 24, 24 hours in a day, you can tell what hour you will land back on. So it's the same idea, guys. You could say, hey, today we are in July. What month will it be 100 months from now? Well, divide by 12 because that's how many months are in a year? How many months until you get back to the same month? Yes or no? Is this making a little more sense now? Because it's not just about the days in a week. This could be anything that's cyclic, anything that has a cycle, anything that cycles through. We can make a problem about that. Cool. Huge day. That is huge. So, Coach, one question. I guess if they are asking for months, do we need to know which month has 31? Nope, 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 nope. They wouldn't. No, they wouldn't. Um, this is a unit one, Grizel. So, Landa, no, they wouldn't unless they give you the information. Because, um, like, they're going to have to tell you, like, which year is a leap year if they want to go that route. Uh, but typically, they're presenting questions to you so that you can reason with them arithmetically, not work through vague situations like, is it a leap year? If that makes sense. Cool. So it's AR unit one. This is general word, pro general word problems. General word problems. All right. Yeah, no worries. Jack, I got you, boss. So uh, with that, um, I have to go ahead. Here's what I'm going to do. I rarely do this. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to present the next question to you. And I'm going to give you the answer to said question after one minute. Okay. Um, because the time for class is almost up. I'm going to let you try this one last question out and I'll actually just give you the full two minutes, but I won't be able to dive into the explanation. I'm going to go ahead and actually circle the answer. And I want you, if you're in my program, shoot a picture of your work, showing me, verifying that you know how to do the question. And trust me, you may have seen this type already. So here we go. I'll give you two minutes to do this one. The timer has started and here it is. And then from there, for those of you who are interested in the program, again, just stay for the last five minutes. I'll go ahead and show you exactly how to sign up and everything you get with it, plus a nice discount if you decide for tonight.
And about 15 seconds left here before your friend Test Anxiety is going to pick an answer for you. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Put a question mark next to your answer if it is a guess. If you freaked out, take a guess. Hey, no worries. Take a guess. Take a guess. Now, it turns out that I actually am going to explain how this problem works because, everybody, this one was actually a very quick one. Here's a very quick, very solid explanation here. My party people, do we understand that we're trying to figure out how much we'll pay for a basket of oranges? Is that true? Trying to figure out how much we're going to pay for a basket of oranges. Sounds awesome. Okay, what do we know? We know that we're being charged $3.50 per pound, and it weighs one pound and two ounces. My party people, quick question, quick question. Stay on me real quick. Uh, one pound, two ounces, that's, that's like a little more than a pound, right? Yeah, one pound, two ounces, that's a little more than a pound. So if I'm paying $3.50 per pound, if it's a pound and two ounces, is that going to be exactly $3.50, more than $3.50, less than $3.50? It's going to be more than $3.50. Okay. 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 Okay, cool. Yeah, the only answer here is B. The only answer that's plausible, only one, is B. Um, this is one of those trick questions. I forgot I put this one in there. Um, but yeah, this, I love this question because um, it's not going to happen for every single one of this type. There are ones that you actually have to calculate. But this is a trick question that makes people freak out when they see that, oh, whoa, 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 I'm doing per pound. So I got to convert ounces to pounds, not pounds to ounces. And that may freak some people out thinking that they have to do all that work. But actually, if you took a quick look at the choices after knowing what you have to do, you can expect that your answer has to be a little over $3.50. And there was actually only one answer that was even above $3.50. So does anybody here see what I'm talking about now after previously going through some test anxiety? Gotcha. So remember, guys, keep it calm. Like This is one of the paradigms of things that we wanted to achieve in today's class, being able to keep calm and understand how strategies work. If you know, here, like pay attention, if you know what you're supposed to do in a problem, then you know what answer you might expect. Okay, here in this case, it has to be a little over 350. And if you look at your answer choices and there's only one answer that fits that description, boom. Remember in the beginning where we said we didn't have to do the whole subtraction for the money? We only had to subtract the cents because all the answers were different? Boom. Like there, this is... Um, this is something that we really need to get good at, especially after we master the basics. Once you have the fundamentals down, it's really about equipping yourself with quick calculations, being able to quickly understand what word problems turn into in terms of math, and then, bam, test-taking strategy applied with that. It all comes together, and it'll help you do problems that they expect you to take three minutes on. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. So it takes time. It really does take time. But my party people, how are you feeling in, as an individual here after going through these questions? How are we feeling? Feeling pretty good? Oh, Angelica, I would love for you to take another look at one of those questions and see <laughs> and see if you'll, you'll notice um, the same pattern. Feeling better, feeling good. Yeah, so remember, today we were working on model, or units one through five. Tomorrow, we're working on units 6 through 13. So tomorrow's class, you can expect to see um, solving equations word problems, systems of equations word problems, area and perimeter word problems, volume word problems. We're also going to have circle word problems in there and some statistics, finding mean. And also, um, we may have an advanced word problem in there as well. So um, definitely get ready for class tomorrow. Yep, all arithmetic reasoning tomorrow again as well. So if you are in the program tomorrow, same time, I'm going to send you the link and the um, via text and email. So make sure that between now and then you continue your progress in the math basics. And if you're done with that, continue making progress in the arithmetic reasoning and math knowledge. 
Remember that this Wednesday, I'm going to be sending out your weekly progress report, showing you everything you've done up to this point and where you should be focusing your attention next. So again, if you're in the program, great job, guys. You guys are awesome. Um, please, if you wouldn't mind before you go, leave a quick word of encouragement for those who are considering the program. That way they know what they're getting into, the kind of community that they're going to be in. So if you wouldn't mind doing that before you go, thank you. And if you are in the program, um, I want to go ahead and just quickly you know, respect your time, introduce what the program does and how it really works for you. And then I'll give you your discount and how to sign up. Worth every penny? Absolutely. And you guys know that I got your back all the way until you pass. So very briefly, um, these are questions that I ask to make sure that the program is really for you. So just take a look at these questions and in the chat box, feel free to quickly answer right here. Number one, do you feel like you suffer from test anxiety? So what that means is, do you feel like, hey, the test is coming up, your heart starts racing. Has that ever happened to you? Do you feel like someone looking over your shoulder while you're taking a test causes you to do more poorly? That's test anxiety. Number two, do you blank on word problems? Do you feel like you have to read a word problem more than twice just to understand the simplest of things because of that test anxiety? Number three, do you hate guessing and hoping for the best? What that means is do you often find yourself running out of time as opposed to finishing all the problems and having time to check your work and doing your thing? No, do you actually find yourself running out of time so often and having to guess a lot of the times? And then lastly, do you feel like you're alone going through this? Do you feel like you don't really have a concrete plan laid out for you step by step? All yes, yes, yes. Okay. And again, thanks for being honest. Um, unfortunately, you know, we have those issues, but fortunately there are ways to really remedy that. There are plenty of ways. So question, do you feel like this class worked for you? Do you feel like this improved your chances of passing through the strategies that you learned? Do you feel like more of this could work for you? Do you feel like if you had me in your corner with everything lined up, do you think you would pass? All right, right on. Easy answers, right? Cool. So allow me then to go ahead and explain how the program works. Um, and the first thing I'm going to say is this. It, it, you don't have to be, you know, some special main character in some crazy story to ace the ASVAB. You know, to be able to succeed, you have to be able to identify your deficiencies, your problems, and you have to be willing to work on them. If you're willing to do those things, anything can be achieved. So some of my students, you know, I've helped thousands of students pass, and it's been an absolute pleasure of mine. And you can be right there with me. So here's how the program works. Here are some of the features that you get. And I will go ahead and actually post a picture here in Zoom of all the features in the program. Everybody, please go ahead and take a look right here in the chat box. You should see a picture pop up. So that's a picture with all of the features of the program. It's loading in there now, but basically, you have all the live classes, three days a week, two hours a piece, and you get all the recordings. You have over 500 recordings right there for you. But the great thing about the program is really the online courses that are set up for you step by step all the way until you pass. We're talking over 15,000 practice questions. We're talking about lessons, pre-recorded, and we're talking about guided practice, worksheets, step-by-step -step solutions, everything you need for every single unit for math, for English, and general science. So I have your back every step of the way until you pass with um, progress reports, and you can text me whenever you need help. So yes, anybody can use the program, whether you have a busy schedule or a completely open one, whenever you need help, you got it. So with that, um, yep, I put the picture up in there so you can see all those features. I'm glad you guys got it. And so with that said, everybody, here's what to do. So with the coupon code Monday, tonight only, all caps right there. You can save $8 on um, every month of the subscription, or you can use the code Monday to save $50 off of the year and the lifetime plans. Ooh, Angelic, I love that. So with that said, here's how to sign up. Let me go ahead and post the link for you. Right there. And so my party people, look, if you're looking to raise your score, this is the way to do it. You know, it's not... It's not going to do the work for you, but it makes it so much easier to actually want to sit down and get to work. One of the biggest issues with people is staying consistently motivated 
that does it for you. It lines up everything for you. There are no excuses. All you need to do, make the time, sit down, get to work. So with that, let me go ahead and post this also for my party people on YouTube. Right there. But remember, guys, it's not like you're, you're not going to get lucky in pass. The score you get is indicative of your skill level. So you got to raise it slowly but surely every single day. And this allows you to do that from the very basics of the basics all the way to the advanced. And these are some awesome comments here. Um, so if you're in Zoom, I would definitely check the chat box. Um, thank you guys for staying behind and leaving those comments. Those of you in the program, I appreciate that. Yeah, especially, yeah, if you're looking, great question. So if you have your test in, let's say, two weeks or 10 days, and you think that this program is definitely the difference maker for you, great. But the thing is, don't rush the process. So many people you know, think that they can cram for this test. And the thing is, to a degree, that's true. You could, sort of. But you could score so much higher if you actually took the time to study and build the confidence the right way. And it really makes a big difference. There's a huge difference between getting a 31 and not having much of a say in what job you get or taking the extra month, the extra six weeks, and then getting a 56 or more and then being able to choose between which jobs you want. There's a big, big, big difference. So again, I, I'm not saying, you know, you have to reschedule your test, but I'm saying I'm strongly suggesting that if you have a test coming up in 10 days, five days, and you're freaking out, don't add the pressure. You can reschedule respectfully by telling your recruiter. Yep. Yeah. I'll go ahead and paste the code again. Again, the code is Monday. The code is Monday. Yep. And all you got to do is sign up is click the link right there. Click sign up and raise your score. Plug in the code and there you go. Yeah, I love these. I'm just reading through these right now. <laughs> I appreciate you, Landa. See you tomorrow, Grizel. And I believe someone said check there. Sharonda, I got gotcha. you. Cool. So I'll check that for you, Sharonda, for sure. iPhone, the answer to the last question was 394. Mm -hmm. Alexander, it's a pleasure having you, man. And oh, as always, you know, always reach out to me. Always let me know how things are going. Even on the busiest days, love hearing from you. Love hearing that progress. So Tariq, you've only been it for a little over half a month. And woo, this has helped me understand so much. Um, I'm very reliable. My methods are really easy to understand. If you're serious about your future in the military and you want to understand math, this program will help you so much. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, and that's the thing. Like my, my philosophy when I built this company was how can I, like, how can I be the teacher I wish I had when I was in school? And in today's day and age in 2023 with technology, you know, doing one-on-one -on -one tutoring just wouldn't work. You know, that, it, that does not work. If I'm able to give you support during the session, beyond the session, in between classes, and on your own time, that would be the perfect approach. So that's why we have all the classes. That's why you have all these courses set up for you online, accessible 24-7. And that's why I make myself available so you can reach out to me via text whenever you need me. And on top of that, I do a little programming and I build a lot of little robots to help you guys out even more. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. The days we have classes, um, three days a week, typically Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. Sounds good, Zoom user. Pleasure. Like I'm really looking forward to having you in there. And once you sign up, just make sure to go through that program checklist and then go ahead and reach out to me directly saying, hey coach, introducing myself, let's work together. I gotcha. Uh, iPhone was it the same setup? Um, no, it was a little bit of a um, it was a little bit of a trick question. 
So if you want to just look at the recording um, when you're off of work, uh, go ahead and do that. Or if you want to, it's going to be toward the end of this recording. Jaden, go ahead and shoot me a text on that. Yeah, please, please, please. If you have any questions about the program at all or about the job that you want to know what score you need, absolutely reach out to me. You can text me right here at 567-698-8867. And, you know, once you click that link and you look at the program, you'll absolutely see how affordable this program is because other people are charging like $200 a month. Like sometimes I'm going to charge that for the year. So Lou Janisha, like you'll, you'll get this. You will absolutely get this with practice. And please let me know if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, but it's going to take time. Be patient with the process. You'll absolutely raise that confidence in your score. Uh, Justin, thank you so much. Quick question. Even if I don't do well in the math part of the ASVAB, but do well in the other uh, courses, will I have a passing chance? Absolutely. Absolutely. But here's the thing. You can get a lot better at the math by just finishing the math basics. You know, a lot of people, when they finish the math basics, they see that so many of these things that they were confused on in the past, it becomes so much more clear because they're not being, their vision isn't being clouded by, oh, how do I work with a decimal? How do I work with a fraction? How do I work with this type of number? No, all that's gone. So after you finish the math basics and you put the time in there, you'll be able to see so much more about word problems than you previously thought because you won't be distracted by weird numbers. And again, yep, so Coriolis, um, yep, same response. You can definitely still pass. But it's it's really good idea to be balanced. Very good idea to be balanced. You want more job opportunities. You want more say in your career. So yeah, Chris. So same response to you. So you take the you take the test the second of Monday of August. Um, do you think if you study your material every day that you'll uh, be able to improve a lot? Yeah, I mean, if you have if you have a free schedule, an open schedule every single day. I've seen people do it. I've seen people make 25 plus point jumps in that time frame, but they had the time. They didn't work, you know, a full time schedule um, and then come home and study nine hours. You know, if you have the time there, it's possible, but it depends on where you are also. Um, I've heard about the person that you're mentioning iPhone. I'm not going to say, it, you know, right here live on uh, YouTube. Um, but I do, uh, I am familiar with that person and their work. And I am familiar with those uh, comments made about that instructor. Um, I mean, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate, but, um, you know, not everybody who says that they're an ASVAP tutor is actually a teacher. I have a master's degree in math education. I have a bachelor's degree in math education. Um, I have done a lot of work in my field. A lot. So um, I know I can confidently say that I know what I'm doing. I cannot say that everybody else knows what they're doing. Uh, Guzman, Coriolis, if you want to go ahead and shoot me a text, there's my number right there. Uh, shoot me a text with that uh, job code and tell me what branch, Navy, and I'll go ahead and search that up for you and I'll get you that information first thing in the morning. You can also Google it. You might be able to find it very quickly yourself, but if you can't find it, let me know. I'll find it. So Zoom here is if you have a lot of time in my hand. Yeah. So, and it's not about how much you're studying a day because you need your breaks. It's about making sure that you set proper goals every day and meet those goals. So for example, if you're saying, hey, today I'm going to make sure I master addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division with whole numbers, there's your goal. Whether that takes you two hours or five hours, that's up to you. That's up to how hard you hit it, how many questions you ask me, how to get help, how consistently you follow the program. So it's not about time. It's about meeting your goals. And I have a video for you, Zoom user, if you want to uh, reach out to me, text me, ask me about my five steps to learning video. I'll send that to you because that's exactly the, the focus you want to have for every topic you do, every study session you have. David, the program will absolutely help you with fractions. 
and curry owls. I feel dumb every day. Like, you know, I get it. I get it. Anytime that you're in an uncomfortable situation, that can lead to that feeling of, you know, feeling dumb. But, you know, feeling dumb just means that you're uncomfortable. And when you're uncomfortable, that leaves a lot of room for growth. It's because you're putting yourself out there to try to grow. That's why you might feel dumb sometimes. And that's okay. Like if feeling dumb sometimes is the price to pay for long-term success, sign me up, sign me up. I want to feel dumb every day. And I do because I do a lot of programming and coding and I feel dumb a lot. But <laughs> when you do finally find those successes, you feel great. Do I just teach math or all subjects in the ASVAB? Again, we do arithmetic reasoning, math knowledge, word knowledge, paragraph comprehension, and general science. Michael, what's going on, boss? Hey, you passed? 09M? Let's go. 09M. Congratulations, Michael. Shoot me a text. Michael, shoot me a text. I want to get um, I want to get a few awards for you for the website. Absolutely want to go ahead and shout you out too. So if you wouldn't mind, shoot me a text. Um, that way we can make sure uh, to shout you out in tomorrow's class and then put you on this weekend's uh, Saturday shout out. And Brian, let me know if you've uh, heard my answer. Again, I teach both math, both English and general science. And yeah, that's the thing. So yeah, there are absolutely a ton of programs out there like for, for in the military, like the Future Soldiers Program and other programs that accept a lower score from you. But here's the thing, guys. When you read that, there you know, you're not reading the whole contract. You're not reading the whole fine print. You know, a lot of those contracts come with huge stipulations, especially if you're not meeting their minimum mark. It is so much better for your life if you are going beyond that mark and then basically being able to choose what job you want, your contract structure, you have a lot more flexibility as opposed to just saying, okay, cool, I got a 15, got a 16, got a 21, whatever, I'll sign. Next thing you know, you're in not the job you wanted, the path for promotion, a very long one, and you still got to study and retake the ASVAB, but then you're stuck in this position for a lot longer than you wanted to be. So think about that, guys. That's something you really want to think about. Landa, thank you. I'm going to forward that over to Andre, my assistant, or um, my partner there for the shirts. Corey Alice, I got you, man. I got you. Segan, taking it Wednesday. Brian, I have. I've helped all branches. Mm -hmm. um, Segan, if you're taking it Wednesday and you're not feeling like you're 100% ready for it, again, I would totally suggest postponing. No problem with that. Hey, David, you will. Lujanisha, sounds good. And please, Lujanisha, tell me if I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Please. It sounds correct. Sounds good, Chris. Welcome to the program. And let me just make sure I'm catching everybody who's signing up. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the 10, 11, I think it's 11. Oh, yeah, the 7. Perfect. Yeah, so for the 11 of you that finished signing up, um, make sure to read the program checklist. I send you an email for a welcome email, and I also send you a welcome text message. Please, 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 any information or communication that I send you, super important that you read through, okay? It always has important information, how-tos, quick guides, but most importantly, your program checklist is the first and only thing you want to focus on. It's going to tell you how to access your progress book, how to access all your courses, the classes, the recordings, everything's in there, and exactly how to get started. So please, don't skip that. Got to make sure you do that. Uh, a class tomorrow, same time. 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And again, always recorded. So you can always uh, go back to it and you get access to over 500 recordings from the past. Um, that way you, you are literally never out of content. 
Okay. Bom. Yeah, I should have hopped off a long time ago. That was somebody important to my life. <laughs> oh, the hell? <laughs> yeah, my girlfriend's like, where are you at? Sends me a picture of her corgi. Dad, where are you? <laughs> Can you show me where the link for the Zooms for Pay program? Um, so Evelyn, if you're in the program, you get the link sent to you automatically two hours before class starts. And if you're in the program, if you log in to the schedule page, you'll see the link right there. And then whenever you log into your account, the link is also right there. So I put it everywhere for you. But again, if you're in the program, um, it's always available to you. So uh, uh, Evelyn, shoot me a text, let me know you didn't get the text message or email. And also just confirm that when you sign into the website, you see it when you scroll down. You should see the link for the next class always. Yeah, you have to be signed in first though. Cool. So with that said, guys, I do need to go ahead and skedaddle. I should have been off about uh, 15 minutes ago. So with that, um, I love you guys as always. Remember that if you have any questions at all, shoot me a text. My number is 567-698-8867. To sign up, just go ahead and click the link I sent you in the chat box. Um, click sign up and raise your score. Then you can use the code Monday to get a discount off tonight only. So again, that's going to be $8 off the monthly or $50 off the year or the lifetime. Feel free to take advantage of that. And everybody, I will see y'all tomorrow. You guys have been awesome. And again, take your time. Remember that achieving something great can't happen overnight. It takes deliberate, consistent, intentional effort. And sometimes it sucks. And that's okay. So keep doing your thing, guys. Keep pushing forward. Learn a little bit day by day. And I'll see you in tomorrow's class, guys. That's AC Asbad. Cheers. <laughs>